Welcome back to Neil Oliver Live. I spoke at the top of the show about the war on humanity, on the individual. Among the uncounted casualties of the war are children, unknown numbers of them, as it turns out. The new movie, Sound of Freedom, tells the story of one man's efforts to save children from, from being trafficked for sex and other purposes. Dismissed and ridiculed in the US when it opened in cinemas as more conspiracy crankery, it undeniably and irrefutably depicts reality. My first guest tonight is Dr John Campbell, familiar to millions on the internet, who has this week turned his attention to statistics that should horrify and shame every last one of us. Hi, John. How are you? Good, Neil. Thank you. Good to be back on again. And yeah. I'm really sorry we have to be discussing this in the 21st century. It really is an indictment on everyone and on humanity that this needs to be discussed and needs to be brought to the surface. C can you give a sense of the scale, John? That's really when I listened to your 20 minutes or so of, of, of commentary, it was mm. the cold reading of statistics, undeniable, from, from official world bodies can you give us the scale? Yeah, it's the only way I can get through it, Neil, just keeping it as cognitive as possible. So this is from the United Nations data at the moment. 50 million human beings are in slavery and forced marriage as we speak, 50 million people. That's one in every 150 people in the world is currently in some form of modern day slavery. Over 12 million of these, Neil, are children. The most common purpose for this imprisonment, incarceration is sexual exploitation. Not the only purpose. There's also forced labour and there's also organ harvesting, but sexual exploitation is the main one. 6.3 million people in situations of forced commercial exploitation on any given day. So today, 6.3 million men, women and children, often even babies, have been subject to forced commercial exploitation. And the numbers are even higher than that because that data is a little out of date. And this number definitely includes 1.7 million children in commercial sexual exploitation from the United Nations. Now, I've checked with Statistica, Neil, in the Encyclopedia Britannica. The, the, the transatlantic slave trade went on from 1501 to 1866. And this despicable evil trade trafficked 12.5 million human beings. The Barbary slave trade, where people were kidnapped and taken to the Barbary states from European countries from 1500 to 1750, uh, 1.25 million people. So this dwarfs previous problems with, with slavery. Over 50 million people now, and it's growing exponentially. This is one of the world's biggest problems. In terms of organised crime, this is second only to uh, drug trafficking and drug uh, exploitation and drug use. Kerry, when you listen to this, when you listen to figures like that, what's your gut feeling? Well, uh, two things. First of all, I, I really appreciate what uh, Doctor's done in terms of going through all the authoritative reports. Um, and I, I, I really respect that. But I'm also, I have a scepticism, and I don't know that it's just about the figures, because there are these lurid horrors. There is no question about it in terms of trafficking, sex exploitation. We know that in terms of pornification of children. But there is something about relativizing slavery, I have a problem. There is already, I think, 99.9% .9 of people find this disgusting. So I don't think there is a mass... But that doesn't stop it. No, that doesn't Sitting stop Sitting back and it. saying I'm disgusted by it does not obviate no, the fact it, that more no, people I'm are enslaved now than were during the 18th and the we, 19th we centuries. We object to it. And the only way these figures can then be promoted or added up to so huge is by saying that it's largely invisible. Because otherwise we'd see it, and I think we would do something, and we do do something, and there is a swathe of laws making it all criminal. But John and actual slavery, let's not forget that the Atlantic slave trade was legal ownership of other people as animals. Yes, chattel slavery... This is not legal. Chattel slavery is a, is a separate entity. It is, but, John, this, the, the note there, there that, that Kerry is, is sounding it, it, it is, to me, it, it is... Uh, what, a part of what troubles me, that it, it, as though because it's not about ownership, it's not as bad. And yet, and yet, you're talking about millions 
of people and children and babies being used, owned or not. And this distinction between chattel slavery and the, the sexual and commercial exploitation of people, I, I find that, I think that's the problem. Is that, is that why it falls into a void of being ignored? I think whether these people are legally owned or not illegally owned doesn't change their status. We have adults and children, men and women, who are being forced to work in unsafe situations, in mines, in farms, they're exposed to toxins, they're exposed to heat, they're exposed to cold. We have people who are exploited for their organs, they're moved across borders. There's organized organ removal, organized by criminal networks and some state actors along the way. And they're also in situations of daily rape. It's estimated that for children that are in sexual uh, exploitation, and sexual slavery, they're expected or they on average, they've been estimated to service 1500 clients uh, per year. And we're talking about brutal rape here. Now, if you talk to a child who's been brutally raped, Neil, I don't think he really cares whether he's owned or not. The point is he's being brutally raped and there's nothing he can do about it. He's completely subjugated, he's completely incarcerated, he's completely imprisoned, whether there's some legal piece of paper or not to deny yeah, ownership. Yeah, but I'm not, nobody that would dispute that. The horror of it and the reality of people living degraded, exploited, dominated, cruel lives, that, that's indisputable. The reason I'm saying, why do we need to call it slavery? And let's be careful about the numbers is because I don't think we are facing um, great human deprivation, a depraved humanity oh, the numbers that are is huge. being bestial. The numbers are huge. The numbers well, are, that's are why I'm saying, sense. let's think about this. Is it really the case that in Britain, for example, we have this great depraved humanity doing bestial criminal acts to children. In the main, no, I don't think we are. They are isolated, rare and appalling. I, and that's why Tim Ballard and his film is good because he doesn't, in, he does sometimes in interviews kind of go off on one about the figures, but he got off his bum and dealt with real cases. But, but John, why, why don't we hear about this? You know, I'm, I'm hearing what Kerry's saying, but why is this not across the newspapers, across the television channels? However you want to characterise it, whether you want to call it slavery or not, this abuse, I mean, the fact that, I mean, you can't just rip out a heart or a kidney or a liver. It implicates professional medics in the, in the removal of these organs. You know, the, the industrialised, specialised scale of this, why isn't it everywhere? Why are we not mm -hmm. talking about it? It's a, re it's a really good question, and it really makes you wonder about vested interests. There's state actors, there's organised crime, people are intimidated by organised crime. But these numbers, Neil, are real. I've been digging into them in quite some detail. The United Nations Statistica, Encyclopedia Britannica, World Council for Health, Department of Homeland Security, American Bar Association, National Centre for Exploited and Missing Children, Canadian Centre for... Uh, for Child Protection, National Institutes of Justice, United Nations Office in Vienna, European um, European Parliament. Th 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 these are not magicked up numbers. Th these are genuine statistics that have been done by international agencies that, that are that are supervising these things. I think you know, Neil, a big point, a big part of the answer to your question is people just can't believe how horrendous this is. Now, I, I've I've seen the edge of this in, in various Asian countries, in various African countries, it is real. I have seen it in the United Kingdom. It's not always obvious, but it's certainly there. The fact that this is so horrendous, so disgusting, so, de so vile, so depraved, is ordinary people like you and me and your guest and most of your viewers can't, can't imagine the level of depravity that's involved here, but it is real. Ordinary, decent people just can't imagine that people could be so vile to children and enslaved people in the modern era. It's just beyond comprehension. So that it does is mean, though, when we do real. see it and when we do hear about it, we act. And that's what Sound of Freedom is about, people who did something. And I watched the film yes. last night. Um, but so, I see, the thing is, 
I don't think it's that we can't imagine it. We watch gruesome movies all the time and we see all sorts of horror. Um, Sound of Freedom is good because it doesn't do all that. It's not voyeuristic. It just says, here's the horror of it. It's real. It's happening. So when you do see it, like he did... It's, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Say. I've got to get to a break. And I, I have to thank John for, you know, for bringing this, you know, for bringing these cold facts to light. But to me, it's the fact that if, when that film that you're praising launched in the US, it was treated as crankery. The first response of the, of the, of the critics was to say, this is crankery, this is conspiracy theory. And there's something pernicious about the fact that that is the automatic response to this kind of horror. But, but John, thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing when that to light. Said, you may choose to look the other way, but you can never again say that you did not know. Anyone listening to this programme now knows I have presented the facts. Act on them. Exactly, John. Thank you. We'll speak again. Have to get to a break. Uh, after that, we'll...